Hi, I'm Tracy Betts. Um, we're going to talk about customer journey mapping for trade associations and nonprofits, or for anybody. So, first, um, who here is with an association? Nonprofit? Who's here just because it's a really cool room and you need to get some work done? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's half of my Google Doc. Um, so, um, okay, so who here has done journey mapping? Awesome, awesome, awesome. And who um, is coming with specific questions or um, maybe not fully bought into the journey mapping process? Okay. Oh, were you just waiting? Mm -hmm. So, um, those that have done the journey mapping process, successful, not successful? How do you feel about it? I felt it was very it successful, yes. It worked. Okay. Okay. Yeah? Are you all in the same organization? Okay, good. On you separately. Okay, so um, my name is Tracy Betts. I am with Balance Interactive. We started using journey mapping as part of our user experience process about four years ago now. Um, we've learned a lot along the way. Um, this, there's a lot of different ways we could have taken this session. I had started out thinking maybe we would map the, the journey of um, what it's like to get lunch at this event, <laughs> because every year it is, it is a journey. Um, but then I realized we only had 40, 45 minutes. So we're not going to do that. It's going to be a little bit more dry. Um, but please ask me questions along the way, um, and I'll hopefully be able to answer them. So um, I just want to start out by talking about what is the purpose of, uh, of mapping the customer journey. When we first started this, um, right, the, the, the ultimate purpose is to lead your customers down a sales funnel. Right? You want them to do something. Hold on, I'm going to shut this door. I can hear the debug academy, actually, while I'm here. So, um, to walk you through that sales funnel, right? Whether it's online, whether it's offline, um, you're trying to get your customers to have the best experience throughout that sales process. But what we also learn is um, there's a couple of other uses for journey mapping that we've used with our customers. One of them is um, empathy. Um, if you have a team who maybe hasn't put themselves in the customer's shoes all the way and really needs to understand um, how to better serve customers, this is a nice tool for that. Um, and another surprising thing that we've learned is it's really great for internally selling an issue or a challenge. We've worked for organizations that um, maybe the content process throughout their agency or organization is cumbersome and they've been trying to figure out what content management system are they going to use as a platform. Um, sometimes visualizing what that journey is of content itself um, can be very, very helpful um, and visualizing that just like the bill here, right? He went through his own journey. So the first thing you're going to do is um, when you start this process is you really want to decide what are you mapping, right? There's a lot of different things that you could, you could be um, digging into here. You can dig into the entire customer experience from how did they find us to what is the first interaction they have with us to what happens when they purchase um, to what happens at the end, what happens when we lose a customer, right? So you can take that um, in, in its big chunk. Um, you may want to just choose the online process, right? What is the online piece of the customer experience with us? What is it like to register for an event? Um, if there's only one association guy here and only a couple nonprofit people here, where else are you guys all? Government? Government? Oh, crap. Okay. So, and have any of you government, um, is there any talk of journey mapping or can, can someone tell me what, what's going on in the government space? No? Um, a redesign of a website. Redesign of a website, okay. For a museum. Okay, okay, okay. Has anybody attempted it in the government space? Um, I work at the National Archives. Yeah. And so she's done a couple um, demos of how the process works with 
model teams. Did she just come to you from another agency? Yeah. Okay. I know who that is. Okay, great. Um, you, you, there's an example here that you'll, you might relate to then. Um, so um, this last example, I'm, I'm just going to back this up a second. Um, this example of um, using the journey of content itself or using the journey of, of a piece of an organization and how to show how easy or difficult it is for your agency to get that information onto the web um, could be very relevant to this, this crowd other than the five people that are nonprofits or associations. Um, so we'll, go, we'll dig a little bit more into that. Um, the first thing you do want to do is decide what is, what is it that you're mapping. Um, are you going to map the entire customer life cycle? Are you going to only map the online experience? Um, if you're an association or a non nonprofit, you generally have a meeting or a conference which is really important to you. <laughs> I'm just going to talk to you. Um, and um, you know, you can, you, what we've done in many cases is map the journey of the conference itself. What is that experience? What are the high points? What are the low points? Um, or even a piece of that conference. What are poster sessions like? Um, do you know what poster sessions, anyone do poster, any scientists here that do poster sessions? Okay, so we mapped this and our team was blown away that we had Nobel Prize winning liver researchers creating posters like in middle school. Um, so, I don't know. Um, and there were some, there were some definite um, touch points there that um, created ideas for the organization. So there's a lot of different things you could be mapping. You could get very specific, you could get very broad, it depends on time, it depends on budget, um, it depends on how much um, research that you want to add to fill in those holes. And who exactly, whose journey are you mapping? Um, you have a lot of different customers, right? It's the media, you have, um, if you are a membership organization, you're dealing with, well, if you're any organization, you have millennials, you may have an international component, um, you have uh, aging individuals, you have to cater to all of these individuals. In a journey mapping process, you're gonna, you're gonna pick a persona, okay? And you're gonna map for each persona. Um, and some of these personas you may find are um, similar enough that you can bring them through the same journey, but you want to be very careful not to group them together. This, um, I don't know if you've heard uh, Georgia Interactive speak at any of these conferences. Anyone? Okay, well, I, I, I stole this from, um, with, from Camille, and um, I think that rather than personas, if you take it a step further and um, try to dig into what is it that your um, users are feeling. Um, here's, you can actually get this template online at Georgia Gov Interactive. I think it's a really great tool. I like this because it, does, it leaves holes, right? This is where you're, you're going to sit, think you know something about a customer, but sometimes when you have to look at this, you realize, I really don't know how they're feeling. I really don't know how frustrating it is to get online and register for an event. You know, I've never seen anybody do it before. Um, that's where you're going to start getting information for what um, type of information you need to collect around your personas. So at this point, you know, um, you've decided what you're mapping. You've narrowed down your personas. Has anybody created personas in this room? Okay, good. Um, um, and then you're going to start, at this point, assembling stakeholders. Okay, so you want to get the right people in the room. I ran out of brain power. There's nothing pretty on this slide. It's, this is what you get. Um, and you want to get people with different perspectives. Okay, so if you're going to map the journey of um, a piece of content, right, that piece of content may um, come from many different parts of the organization in different forms. Right? So let's get everybody in the room. Or if you're going to be mapping a conference um, experience, you want the person who's in charge of registration there as well as the person who's in charge of sponsorship. Okay, so you're going to come from all different perspectives. Um, you want to make sure there are people that are engaged that actually care. Um, I can tell you from personal experience, if you have a group of people that really don't care, it doesn't matter. Um, and then finally, you want to share, their, share your vision. Let them know what you're mapping. Let them know why they're there. Let them know how important it is. 
Um, this is, I can't, this is so important because this process can be messy and confusing and if you get a bunch of stakeholders in a room to go through a journey mapping process um, and they're not well prepared, they can get frustrated and they can throw their hands up. Um, I remember the first time we did this internally as a company. At the end of the session, I literally, nobody had prepped me, and I, I literally threw my hands up and I said, oh my God, I'm exhausted for our customers. I mean, like, this is the stuff we make our customers do. This is exhausting. Um, let's cut some of this stuff out, right? Um, so prepare them. Okay, any questions? I'm, I'm like blowing through this. No. Okay. Okay, so now you're going to get everybody in the same room and you're going to map out the timeline. Okay, so in, in my mind, this is really the, the funnel, the engagement funnel. What are the steps that, in, in, in order um, of time, that a customer is making these transactions with you? Whatever these transactions are. Is it online registration? Is it stepping through the museum doors? Um, is it the, the front desk? You know, what is that first interaction? All the way through the sales, um, not the sales cycle, all the way through all the other interactions you could have with them from purchase to post-purchase and on. You then want to, once you have that nailed down, this is usually sticky notes on the wall, big sticky notes, right? Where those gray boxes are. And then we say, all right, so based on what we think um, this timeline is, what events or activities are our customers performing along this timeline? Okay, are they finding us online? Are they doing a Google search? Are they um, finding us through word of mouth? Um, when they purchase something, where do they purchase it? And how do they get there? Are they driving there? What, is that, what does that look like to them? This is completely independent of you and your organization and what your organization does. Okay, this is all about um, what the customer is doing. And you're, you're kind of guessing at this point, right? Let's assume you know you only have the data you have. Bring that data forward. You know, it could be customer quotes, it could be soft, you know, it could be guesses, um, it could be analytics. Um, but bring it forward and um, make sure that um, you're, you're bringing that to the table. <coughs> and then you're gonna map the touch points. Okay, so where, wh you, you wanna make sure that you're, oh, here we go. So you wanna make sure that wherever that customer is crossing your path throughout their day, or throughout their experience, what you're gonna do is you're gonna ask yourself, was this a good experience or a bad experience? In, and to, in general, you kind of know already, right? When you go to grants.gov, is that an easy experience or is it a hard experience? Is it cumbersome? Do I have to pick up the phone and call somebody? Is it, does it make me happy? Does it make me sad? Have I thrown my cell phone out the window? You know, there's, there's, a, there's a long process um, here. <coughs> Sometimes there's, there's, you see a smiley face in the middle. Um, maybe there's no reaction. Sometimes no reaction, it could be bad as well. So what you see here is we're map mapping the touch points with the customer. We are, um, in the background, we're, we're um, trying to show where highs and lows are as far as what their feelings are. Is this making any sense? So I like this visual, and, and the journey mapping that I've done, we would, each of those like little circles is like an, an activity, that, an action that the person's performing, so, mm -hmm. and then we would have stickies that say, what are they thinking, what are they feeling, so you've got the little smiley faces, yeah. and, and just, and try to, um, again, with the empathy, understanding what they're feeling, but um, to that point, um, do you usually have your actual customers, I mean, the people who are actually using the process, or, you know, participating, should be part of the map? You know, we've done it a couple of ways. You, it's like I paid you to segue to this next slide. Okay. Um, yeah. We, so here's the thing. We haven't gotten stuck on a process. Yeah. And we started to, right? And we were like, okay, it's got to be this way. Mm -hmm. um, what we, We've done this a, a many different ways. What we have found works really well is first do the map internally. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of two things. Um, do the map internally and then do customer research. Mm -hmm. um, maybe invite some customers in. Maybe just observe them. Sometimes if you ask people, you don't get the best answer. Mm -hmm. um, 
one of the best things we've done is we, we'll do the journey map internally, we'll go out and do our own research, and then we'll come back and we'll overlay on that first journey map a second journey map based on what the customers actually said. Good. So here's our, our assumption, here's our hypothesis, we're gonna test it, and then we're gonna come back. Um, in other times, um, uh, like with the archives, there's an example here where we went and interviewed um, all different departments in a government agency. And then we came back, and um, in order to make a point, we showed um, what we mapped the experience of putting a grant online. Um, and that piece um, is what uh, sold the project in the end, really is what happened. There's, yeah, there's several ways, and what we've learned is the more information you get, this can evolve into, um, I mean, you'll, you'll see at the end what, as far as what a customer journey map could look like. We've blown it up before, and we've turned a customer journey map into an iceberg. Um, I'll, sh I'll show you an example. Anything else? Can you hear me when I get it, go over there? Um, you, you also, you know, you're, you're going to want, you see pictures like this, right? Look how nice this is and beautiful and this is what a customer journey, this is what it should look like at the end, right? It's all nice on your wall. This is what it feels like. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's just, if you're really doing it, it's, it's, it can be frustrating because there's so much information, right? If you've really got a bunch of user research there, you should feel a little bit like, Ah, do we really know? Here's the holes. What don't we know still? There should be a lot of questions coming out of this. Um, if it's cut and dry, I would be in too easy. I'd be a little bit suspect. Um, I've never seen it easy. Have you? Has anybody seen it? It could be just me. We could be crazy at my firm. Um, and then you do want to validate any hypotheses. So you're going to come out of this. And this is where further user research is important. We do um, ethnographic research, um, focus groups, one-on-one -on -one stakeholder interviews, surveys. Um, you know, it could be as simple as putting hot jar, something called, uh, has, does anybody use hot jar here? Yeah, it could be as simple as using something like hot jar on your website so that you can um, validate on-page experiences in the moment. Um, Sorry to take you back just a little bit, but yeah. for first owners, are you using the same analytics that you would later on in the process? So are you gathering analytics from the site of what uses the site and audience to make a persona? Or? Yeah. Um, um, say that again? So when you're creating personas at the very beginning, mm -hmm. how are you creating personas? Are you basing it off of analytics that you already have, or are you just pulling at what you Think your audience is? Um, well, you can use the Google demographic data. Okay. Um, so so that's, analytics is like what you're. Yeah, doing. that's really important. Some of it's what you know and what you have, right? Okay. But uh, that Google, um, if you don't know, Google has really great demographic data that it can capture. Um, and I can send you, I don't know, I can get you a link. If you just okay. type it in, right? I think they will find it. Anything else? Okay, so we, we, you, you, we've come back, we've validated our hypotheses, we've, we've um, done some research, we've mapped over that customer journey in some cases. Um, at this point, we're looking for what we call, I don't know what everybody else calls this, in our office we call this moments of truth. Okay, and this are, these are the hard-hitting lessons that we see in this mapping process. Um, and sometimes they're, they're, they're altering um, in great ways, and sometimes they're small, right? So sometimes it's as small as, um, we had to say to one CEO, if you quit doing all of these activities, if you quit doing, let me just show you this, because it's not on the slide. All of these activities, your customers would not only um, not notice in some cases, but they would thank you. So why don't we take that staff, the people that are working so hard to do all of these touch points, and let's redirect what they're doing into something that's higher value for your customers. Um, so that was 
that's pretty big, right? You're taking a whole department and you're diverting what they're doing and making it more meaningful. Um, sometimes those are those moments are tr of truth are, um, you know, your members are at a meeting and they're scientists and they love each other, but they are missing some challenging dialogue. They want, they are craving someone who can create some type of um, what is it? Not challenging dialogue. Some type of um, provocative, provocation is what they were looking for. Um, that's important because how you shape um, that customer experience is very different, right? How you set up member, um, how people talk to each other is very different. 60% um, of your attendees to a conference came from other countries, yet right after the registration process, everybody was kind of walking in circles because they didn't know what to do and all of the signs were in English. You know, that's a really small fix, and what a great change to the customer experience. Um, and of course, there, the, the, there's so much that ha can happen just in the online experience, right? When it comes to registration in particular um, for any event or anything, um, there's generally some type of feedback that we get. So these are the moments of truth. And the reason we're choosing moments of truth rather than this big journey and going through all the highs and lows and ups and downs and detailing it all is because you want some quick wins. This has to work for you beyond um, just showing everybody and putting a pretty picture on the wall. You know, something has to come of this. And to make something come of this, just pick the two or three things that you think you can win, big or small, and highlight them. Um, it is not about design, so let's, I just want to be very clear about this. This can be as ugly as you want it to be. Um, however, there's a however there. Like you can, you can do a customer, sometimes I just do this, this is not not mine, mine wouldn't be that pretty, but um, you know, sometimes you just need to think through with a team or a customer or your internal team. What is the customer experience here? What do you think is happening? Let's put ourselves in our customer's shoes. So use it as a tool. It doesn't have to be this grand process, right? It can be <coughs> you and your team and a whiteboard and just stepping back and saying, let's look at this from a different perspective. Um, but, but when you do, when you are using it inside of an organization and you really want to get something done, um, it helps to put it in a format that people will listen to it. So um, once you're tying it all together, you're gonna, you're, there's going to be a lot of different formats. Um, I have a couple of them up here to show you. So this was a, um, this one represents the customer experience for a uh, association meeting. Um, and you'll see here, this does not look like a customer journey map, does it? But it shows you, this, this is actually the shape of their conference um, by floor. Um, but nobody knows that except for us and them. Um, so, and what we did is we did five different customer journeys, right? So this is what Daniel Ganger's experience was at the conference. Or that persona's experience was at the conference. Um, so that's one example. Um, this is an example that was paired with a set of recommendations that detailed the journey um, in, in with, with specific recommendations. Um, this ended up being a huge wall map. And this is the, this is the customer that we had to say, um, you know, there's a lot of touch points here. And if you look at this maintain section, this is where they were losing customers on a regular basis. Uh, this was solved, actually, by um, integrating Drupal with their um, customer relationship management system so that these people did, that were you know, sending emails and sending letters um, didn't have to do that anymore, right? When a customer came to the website, they were automatically reminded to do things, right? So um, some, a little bit of integration, a little bit of technology can do wonders. Um, any questions about this? And then finally, again, don't get hung up on what a customer journey looks like. This is a customer who came to us and they said, we want you to create a bunch of cool new products for our customers. And because they're not engaged, right? You hear that. 
our customers aren't engaged. Let's make them engaged. Um, well, what does engagement mean, right? So we did a bunch of research because we really wanted to create some cool things, right? And we thought it would be really great. And we had to come back to this customer and say, yeah, you know, here's the challenge. We've, we've done three sets of ethnographic ethnographies, we've um, done focus groups, we've done, we've done stakeholder interviews, we've done surveys, and consistently what we've learned is that um, your non-engaged customers are asking for the products that you already are offering and just can't find them. So rather than paying us money to create something that they already had or create something that they don't have but don't need, we were able to say to this customer, well, this is about marketing. This is about marketing what you already have. You're, these members that are under the iceberg, these at-risk members, um, let's just elevate them and make sure that we're paying attention in the website redesign to what they really need. Um, it, it changed the website itself. It changed their marketing department. So don't get caught up on what it should be. Get caught up on what are you trying to do with it, right? What are you learning and what, what have you learned? And then, um, again, this is taking people a little bit out of the equation. This is using it in a different way. This is the grants process at an organization um, who, for many, they were using, I don't know, I think they were using Drupal and WordPress and what's the HP, what's the HP CMS? They do the Packard CMS, the old one. Yeah, whatever that is. They had a myriad of systems that they were producing grants information on. It was cumbersome. Um, nobody could really talk to each other. So after talking to all the departments, we mapped that journey. And we said, okay, well, how cumbersome is it? Where are the high points? Where are the low points? And we were able to show patterns, okay? So again, it's not, this was an internal process. This had nothing to do with the customer um, per se. In the end, it did because grants information got gets up there more quickly. Um, but we used it as a tool in this case. So it's not about design, but it is about um, understanding and and making sure you're doing something with that understanding. So in that way, design can be very very important. Okay, so that is all that I have, you guys. That is essentially. Um, how we go about it, the steps we take, who we involve, how we make decisions along the way. Um, questions? And most of the associations are looking at this. There are folks beyond the revenue generating aspects, which are uh, events, you know, revenue generation sponsorships, and membership. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we don't do lobbying or fundraising, so we're kind of easy on that. So. Yeah. But the, the question becomes how you know, I'd get someone who can. I guess guide the journey. You can't just have a bunch of people come to the room and doing it. Yeah. So how do you find someone to guide it? How do you determine it? It needs to be a champion either internally or an outside agency who can guide it, right? I mean, it can be, um, you know, I know that some of our clients have one person internally that champions it and just leads everybody through the process. Um, you know, this is, you, you, this is user experience. Right? So you need somebody who's really passionate about understanding the user. Um, we've seen it done in a few different ways. But you need a chance. It just seems to be the set of skills that are needed to make sure you don't just have uh, 15 people in 15 different directions and you're trying to hurt the cancer. Yeah. I've seen this go very messy and very long um, in certain organizations. That. Because you get one loud mouth and you say no everything and then everybody else is back. And so it, has to, it does have to be well facilitated and sometimes it's best to facilitate it. Better pick a nice simple journey rather than a you know, website's too complicated. That's too much to try. Who has to get a piece of it? Like, I would take the registration process. Um, if you take like this last one, if you took the entire customer journey, um, you know, this took us a year and a half, and um, it, you know, it upended this whole organization was changing, um, and. You know, sometimes you're not ready for that. You don't need that. Let's just pick one. What did come out of this is a lot of non due re uh, revenue generation ideas. The what we're looking to do is streamline our website for the things to try to figure out where we can do. 
Yeah. If not with a work website. Yeah. That was fun. Now we're trying to figure out how to make it better. Yeah. Uh, I would pick two or three of the biggest pain points that you think you could get great on the answer. So um, that, that's a very nice looking document that I think people would read. And if you're, a, if you're not a designer and you've done a journey map, do you have any tools that you would recommend or templates to make them look nice so people will read them? Yeah, that's a really good question. And like, what did you, what tool did you we use our designer. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah, but um, you know, we did like with the I, with that iceberg. Um, our team rolls their eyes every time I show that iceberg because they think it was so ugly. Um, but it's effective, right? And um, somebody is there a designer here. Okay, you're going to kill me right now. So give me an alternative. But you know, maybe it's as simple as going on something like 99 Designs and having. Somebody got that out. Are you going to kill me? Yeah. I know. There's a, there's a site called Noun Project. Noun. It's icons, SVG icons. But I think maybe you guys go to another. Oh, it does? Yeah. Noun? The Noun Project. Yeah. It's fantastic. Did you hear that? Noun? Noun? The Noun Project? Okay. Is it a tool? Is it a it's just a library of icons. icons. I have icons. You can, oh, like, nice. Different users can contribute icons for anything under the sun. Okay. That's nice. Interesting. Might be able to do some research first just to get a graph of something so that circles on a page. Yeah, <laughs> something close enough. And we could reference it through the URLs and the PDFs. Does Hot Jar show you where people leave the site? Um, it creates a hot map, doesn't it? It does. It has several components. It has heat mapping, it has um, surveys. It's pretty, it can be pretty simple. I, I found it interesting you were talking a little bit about like, when you first get started and getting the right people in the room and having, uh, it sounded like you were talking about having a lot of the internal stakeholders and coming up with like a hypothesis um, as opposed to potentially going directly to like the consumer. So if you have an agency, you're trying to get people to a conference. In our case, we're trying, we're you know, a public health website and we're trying to get people to like HIV related information. And so something that we find a lot of the times is that our stakeholders have preconceived notions about what the end user needs, wants, what, you know, right? And so we go into a session with them and they'll be like, oh, the, we know what the users are. Well, like, we know what they want. We know what the problems they have are. And then you talk to the actual user and it's like, totally wrong. Yeah. Um, in terms of reconciling those two, how like is there a reason you go to the internal stakeholders first yeah. as opposed to the customers, and how do you reconcile when that. they have differences of opinion? Yeah, I think we find that there's, we've gotten better buy-in when we do the session with stakeholders first who think they know, and then we go to customers and we overlap it, and we, we can show them the differences. Um, the liver, with the, the conference map that I showed you for the liver association, um, in that case, we did not involve the liver association um, in 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 that in the beginning. We did all of our research, and then we presented our findings. Um, and and that seemed to work for that organization. Um, it, it there are certain organizations that are just too political um, to so we kind of just whatever the approach is going to work for the organization. I know that that was a non. <laughs> Have you read any stuff on top tasks? Um, no. There's a couple of good articles. I think there's one on the list of part about really simple prioritization of tasks. Mm -hmm. and getting, it doesn't really matter the order, but getting internal and external rankings and then just showing internal stakeholders the gaps, differences. Yes. Uh, especially in the growth of the situation. Yeah. Are there any uh, books or websites you uh, suggest people Yes, that was supposed to be the last slide, which is not up there right now, but I'm, um, I think this goes online, and so I can add those. Um, I'm not sure I understood it correctly, but there are times when instead of mapping a customer's journey, you might map a piece of content journey. I think you said that. Like we have a CEO who posts a blog every day, and that 
draft goes through many different departments until it gets posted to the design at nine o'clock at night. Yeah. So when, when you're doing a journey of say some content, whose emotions do you capture? The, the, we're generally doing it um, to create some internal change to break a process like that if it is cumbersome. So we're actually mapping the journey of the uh, content editors and the people that are touching that content along the way. Right? So there's many people involved in that process. Yeah, so if there's nine people involved in that process, it's really those nine people that we're talking to um, or, or um, you know, testing. Okay. So it's still people-centered. It's And that was a little bit preconceived because we knew what we wanted to accomplish, right? Our job was to find a enterprise-wide content management system to solve this problem. And we were the third company to come in to try to, I don't know how many reports they had before us, so, but it's the picture that got them, right? Don't tell them, I said that. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions in terms of how often an organization should um, complete uh, journey mapping? Hmm. That's a really good question. Yeah. They go through this process and they get there and have a solution. How often should they go back and look at you know what impact? Yeah, you know, it's you know that's a really interesting question because you, I want to say. There's got to be somebody who can. Here's what I feel like I want to say because every time we walk into an organization, there seems to be a new CEO. And I feel like we're, we're a new leader of some sort. And I almost feel like that's a good time when there's a change in leadership so that they really understand what that customer is going through and understand what your job is in that process. Um, or if something is breaking and, and, or, and there's never, and you can't figure out why is it. Right? Why, what is happening with this particular um, series of forms? You know, I think that's where you want to uh, revisit. Because you know, you're really easy to solve the problem. I don't know, does somebody else have a better answer? Okay. I was counting on you, Eric, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of relating this question. When you update your journey map after fixing, like you said, you fixed that process on May day. Mm -hmm. Do you update your journey map at that point in time? I would. Update? You know, this CEO has this on her wall. This is huge. I mean, I think it's actually bigger than what it shows on this wall. It's huge. And, um, and you know, she could easily put sticky notes over and change it, or we could easily change it for her. Um, you know, because it is evolving. It should, should be living, and actually you bring up a really good point, because right now, there's a lot of customer journey mapping software out there. I know that I spoke with someone um, at Acquia the other day, and they have a new product they're rolling out that is, they call it customer journey mapping software. Is there someone from Acquia in here? Okay, because I stopped at them, and I, and I said, well, how are you planning on doing that? I got kind of snotty about it. Um, but what they're doing is they're taking, they're trying to, um, they're trying to take all the data points that are happening on the web that they're using for personalization and all that analytics and pooling that data around particular users to map individual journeys and then create groups out of that. So I'm fascinated by what that's going to do because this is a very soft process right now. Um, and to take that hard data and map, match it with what we've done here would be fascinating. Um, so I, I don't know. I haven't, the software is really expensive at this point. Has anybody else heard of it or no? So I think that's the next phase. This is going to go. It's going to be a little bit more automated. Uh, you asked earlier who works with nonprofits, and I think I might be the only one. But I work with small to medium sized nonprofits, and I love the opportunity to do something like this, but you said it took a year and a half. We usually have about a six week window just for strategy, yeah. which is everything. And you had to pair this back to the most indispensable aspect of it. What's that one thing that we might get to introduce 
start process today? Yeah, it's funny. We, we just talked to a small organization, and I was, I was frustrated with the timeline and everything that we needed to do. And what we ended up proposing was um, three things. Um, we proposed a single meeting where we did a, a deep audience segmentation workshop. Because I think sometimes people think who their audiences are, but you have to push them to think through exactly who they're serving um, and why, what that customer uh, segment feels. And then we paired that with a journey mapping exercise, um, you know, a two hour exercise where we walk through, we kind of come in with preconceived, this is what your funnel is, um, you know, have the map set up, and then really at this point you're, you're trying to map with them what their journey is. That's how we've done it. I don't know if there's a better way. We also did, um, we do a workshop that helps them think through, think a little bit differently before this. It's called Kill the Company. Um, it, it's uh, written by a woman named Lisa Bodell, and it forces them not to think about their competition, but to think about how their competition would, would um, kill their company at the end of the day. Uh, the exercise works really well in pair, in pair with the customer journey mapping exercise, because then they're not thinking about, they're thinking about their opportunities and their threats. Um, in relation to their customer. I hope that's you know, I know some of your some of your shows are very complex. Are the are the touch points obvious when you actually get down to I mean it's hard to tell from the examples you gave and you actually work with it. It's an obvious that there's a touch point, there's a point that you fix and you're gonna get a lot of value. It's, you said the action is what it's about, not just that pretty thing. Yeah, I don't feel like it's ever been something that's not, um, I, I don't feel like we've ever had a problem with something not being obvious. If we have a question on it or a disagreement, we'll back up the research, right? We'll like, we ask the users, the users will tell you the truth. Um, so that's where there's never, you've got your safeguard because it's always about the user in the end. Um, so if something feels squishy or if something is just right in the middle and somebody's saying, well, I think that's not as people aren't satisfied walking away from that in your in your thinking. Then, we should have mapped the lunch journey and given it to them. I wish I would have done that. Or the coffee journey. Is there coffee this year? Yeah. I remember one year there wasn't any coffee. It was the year when we sponsored it. So pissed. <laughs> I'm glad nobody remembers that. Um, okay, well, then that's all I have. If you have questions, I'm happy to. I'll post this online with more resources. Sorry, I did not do that. Um, and if you have questions, um, you know, you can see.